Okay, at this point, we're going to talk about definite integrals. Or perhaps as you say, we are definitely going to talk about definite integrals. <clears throat> the idea is when you write an integral like this, mm, I'll have to put this in a little box because this is not a definite integral. When you write an integral like this, the answer is x to the third divided by three plus a constant. This is an indefinite integral. So it belongs in our previous work. But definite integrals have bounds and the, you know the initial conditions and you know the final conditions and so we're looking at uh, something that we can absolutely know without this crazy uncertainty right here, this uncertainty of initial conditions. So, an example of a definite integral would be the function uh, x squared, we could still say the function x squared, and we'd still take an integral of it, and we'd do it over x, but we would say, let's take that integral between 0 and 10. The bounds are written here and here. This is where we start, this is where we go. So this expression is equal to this graph right here. So I'm going to draw the graph of x squared. Here it is. Got a nice looking parabola there, where this is y and this is x. And let's say that's 0, 0, and this is 10. Our instructions are to take the integral, which means find the area underneath the curve, of this curve, which is y equals x squared, and we're supposed to find it between 0 and 10. So this is that area. And the wonderful thing about it, this is the strength of calculus, you can take, you can find this area without drawing the picture, without doing any geometry. You don't have to do anything fancy like that. Here's how it's done. You write it, I'll well, write the problem again. We are integrating between 0 and 10 the function x squared. So you know the integral is x to the third divided by 3. And then you write the bounds this way once you've calculated the integral. Between 0 and 10 is where we want to evaluate this calculation. And that's equal to, well, here's what we do. We take the end bound and plug it in, and then we subtract the initial bound and plug it in. So first I'll take the end bound, which is 10, the final conditions, 10 to the third, divided by 3, and then I have to subtract the initial, the beginning of the integral, 0 to the third divided by 3. That is how we evaluate an integral like that, a definite integral, and 10 to the third is 1,000, so we'll divide that by 3, and then we'll subtract 0 divided by 3. So that's simply, excuse me, that's simply 1,000 divided by 3, or about 333. So that's how much area is in there, right there. That's the area underneath the curve. And this has all kinds of practical applications. But for kicks, I will show you something that's a little bit trickier with definite integrals, a little bit trickier of an example. Now I want to give you the function, here's, you know, this is, this is very interesting. I can give you a very funky function. This function is y equals x squared minus 5. So this function is uh, negative 5. Y is negative 5 when x is 0, so that's going to be down here. And um, I guess if, uh, if I'm looking to find when y is 0, let's see when y equals 0, that's going to be my, um, my x-intercept. I'm going to try to put some dots on here. Let's see, we got y and x. So the uh, y-intercept is very easy to find. That's when x equals 0, and that's negative 5. 
And when y is zero, we've got zero equals x squared minus five. So x is equal to the square root of five, but it's plus or minus the square root of five. So we're gonna have, uh, ooh, square root of five, that's, gosh, I guess it's more than two, but less than three. So it's probably gonna be something like here and here. So we need to draw a parabola that does that. And let's say I'm asking you to find the area of this curve, the area underneath the curve between, I don't know, let's just do between um, two and negative two. So this is the craziest that we can make these things. You know, this is an example of the craziness that you can bring to it. X squared minus five integrated over X from negative two up to positive two. There we go. And this can be broken apart into two integrals. Because of the distributive property, we can say it's x squared dx minus five dx. No problem. Let's show each of those. The bounds are the same, negative two to two, x squared dx minus the integral from negative two to two of five dx. So we can perform each of these as follows. This guy, x squared, the integral of x squared is x to the third over three factorial. And we need to evaluate that between negative two and two. And then we're going to subtract the integral of five. Now, five is a constant, so it pulls out. And then we just have the integral of one over dx, which integrates as x. So we're gonna get minus five x between negative two and two. So this and that will give us our answer. This, you know, this is just a silly example. What we're doing here is we're finding between um, negative two and two, we're finding how much area there is under this curve. And I mean, it looks like there's area above the curve. So maybe our answer is going to be a little bit strange. Let's see what happens. I'm supposed to take x to the third. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Here's what I've got. I've got x to the third, but I'm gonna plug in the final bound, which is two to the third divided by three factorial. And then I'm going to subtract negative two to the third divided by, what's this factorial doing here? Who put that factorial there? Dang it. Go away, factorial. That's just supposed to be three. Okay divided by three, and then I have to subtract this stuff. So this is gonna be minus five times two minus five times negative two. Okay, all right, let's see what we get. Hmm, interesting. Okay, <clears throat> two to the third is eight. So we've got eight thirds, and then we've got, well, let's see, negative two to the third is negative eight, but there's a minus sign out here, so we're going to add eight thirds, and then we subtract, well, we're going to subtract 10, and then we're going to Ooh, look at this. This is positive, so that's negative. I'm subtracting another 10. So this is 16 thirds minus 20. That's a negative number, isn't it? Quite negative. And that's consistent with the fact that this area is, well, the curve is below the x-axis. So we should get a negative area. Negative area may sound a little bit strange to you, but I'm gonna write it out and you're gonna smile. Like that, okay?